episode, we're going to be drawing a black cat. I'm going to be drawing an Adobe Illustrator today. I'm going to create a canvas that is set to 8 inches wide by 10 inches tall. Let's go ahead and use our brush tool. This will work kind of like a pencil to sketch out our composition. I'm going to draw an oval for the cat's head and then draw the spine that kind of curves down the base of the cat. And then I'll kind of fill in some skin around that spine shape by creating kind of a pear shape. I'll have the chest bulge out near the top and then it kind of curves down and under near the chest and the belly. And we'll have a little paw kind of sitting out here over on the side. And then maybe the bottom will just be kind of flat and it'll curve up to a tail shape which we'll have in kind of an S shape. Now we'll switch to the eraser tool and we'll use that to clean up some of the extra lines here that we don't want. And this sketch is just going to be a loose sketch. It doesn't have to be exactly what we use for our cat shape. We'll use some of the shape tools to draw over this sketch and make some cleaner shapes. I'm just gonna sketch in where I want the ears. I wanna think about how big I want the ears, but again, it's not set in stone. I can change the size of the ears later once I draw them in and I can experiment with different shapes and positions of the head. I just wanna kind of plot out where everything is going to be in this piece by doing this sketch. I'm gonna sketch in my eye and then so that it's symmetrical on the other side, I could either hand draw it or I could just simply duplicate it by copying and pasting it or you can hold Alt and drag. And once I have that duplicate, I'll go to Object, Transform, Reflect, and I'll reflect it on the vertical. Then I'll go ahead and move my eye so that it's level with the other eye in relation to the angle of the head. The head's pretty straight on now, but if we want to tilt it later, we can. We'll go ahead and just sketch in a few whiskers here. I'll do just three on each side, and they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical if you don't want them to be. Then we'll sketch in some pupils here. We'll have these be kind of crescent shapes. And then I'll take an opportunity to kind of clean this up a bit. I might draw in a bit of a shoulder over here on the right side and then I might flatten out the bottom a bit more as well. I can use the eraser just to clean up areas. And once you're fairly happy with your sketch, we can begin using shape layers to fill this in. I'm gonna select my sketch layer by clicking on the little meat ball next to the layer. Then I'll go to the transparency tab and reduce the opacity down to about 15 so that it's a little bit see-through. Next, I'll lock that layer. Then I'll create a new layer by clicking the new layer icon. And on this new layer, we can use a shape tool such as the ellipse tool to draw on the head. Let's go ahead and move that new layer that we created down beneath the sketch so that we can see the sketch and the layer that we're working on at the same time. And I'm gonna select red. We're not gonna have a red cat, but this just helps us see the shapes we're working with better. I'll select the black arrow tool and stretch out the head a bit until it fits a little bit more closely with my sketch. I'll go ahead and draw another oval shape, kind of like an egg for the ear. We'll go back to the black arrow tool and we'll go ahead and hover over the corner point until we get that curved arrow and that'll let us rotate our ear. We wanna to try to match the angle of our sketch more or less. And if we need to stretch it out or squash it, we can go ahead and do that until it matches the shape of the ear that we want. Now to make the tip of the ear pointy, we go to the Bezier pin, look underneath it for the anchor point tool, and then we click on the tip of the ear to convert it from a curve to a point. Now we wanna move the ear layer behind the head layer. So let's look in our layers palette in that group that we're creating here. And let's just drag the ear down below the head layer to change the order. I'm gonna select the black arrow tool and just stretch it out a bit more so it's a bit wider. I think that looks better. And I might rotate it a bit more as well and just try to get the positioning right about where you want it. Then we'll go ahead and just duplicate this to the other side. I'm gonna hold Alt and then drag while holding Shift. And then I'll go to Transform, Reflect, and I'll flip it vertically. And then I'll just scoot it over with the left arrow and right arrow keys just to nudge it into place, get it pretty well centered by eye. And then what we'll do to center everything perfectly is we'll go ahead and group the ears together into a group first. We'll name the group ears. Let's go ahead and just name our head layer head as well so we know what it is. We'll select the head and the ears group together. We'll make sure that we're aligning to our selection and then we'll just align it on the vertical axis. Now it's all perfectly centered and we don't have to worry about whether or not we got it centered by eye or not. Next, let's draw in the cat's eyes. We'll use the curve pen tool, which is this one right here. When we click, we create a node, and as we create subsequent nodes, it starts to create a curve. If we want a sharp point, we hold Alt and click, and then release Alt to continue creating regular curves. That is much easier to use than the Bezier pen. So now we'll go ahead and zoom in a bit so we can see the eye a little bit closer. 
I'm going to select the white arrow tool and select the eye, and then I'm going to go to the convert anchor point tool and just convert that other corner on the side of the eye into a point as well. Now I want to duplicate my eye, so I'm going to select it with the black arrow tool, and then I'm going to hold Alt and Shift and drag it over, and I'll go to Object, Transform, Reflect, and flip it vertically. And then I'll just nudge it into place using the arrow keys. I'm going to go ahead and select both of the eye layers, and I'll just change the color of those to something else. Let's just say yellow for now. I'll go ahead and group those two eye layers together, and I'll just name that group Eyes. And then we want to make sure that the eyes are aligned with the head and the ears, so we'll just select all three of those groups and we'll align them vertically. Now everything is nice and centered on the head. And now we can start working on filling in the body. Let's go ahead and name that group of groups Cat. Let's go back to our curve pen, and let's go ahead and start drawing here. Just to draw on the body, make sure to hold Alt to create sharp points wherever you want sharp points, like where the foot starts to bend out there. You may want to put a sharp point right down there near the base and then hold shift to get a straight line, put another sharp point, and then let go of alt and continue your curves. That's how you get that nice flat bottom. And then just kind of click periodically along this line. It's up to you how many points you want to make. You can obviously remove points later if you need to. Get a sharp point there on the base of the tail. Go all the way up to the behind the head and then do a couple sharp points just to have a nice flat line across the neck there. So now we have our basic body shape. We can refine this a little bit later. Let's go ahead and fill it now with a color. So I'm going to go to my fill property and I'm going to just select a dark red color. And we want to go ahead and move that body down beneath the head group. Let's go ahead and name that layer body. And next, let's go ahead and change some of these colors to more appropriate colors. I'm going to make sure that up in my color panel, I can see all the options for my color. I can get to those through that top right sub dialog menu. That'll give me quick access to my stroke and my fill next to my color. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill the body layer black and turn off any stroke for that layer. Then I want to repeat that process on the head and ears. So I'll just go ahead and select both the head and ears groups. I'll go ahead and turn off the stroke and I'll set the fill to black. Next, I'll go ahead and draw in the whiskers. I'm going to use the paintbrush for that. And feel free to use undos until you get it looking the way you want. And I'm going to have my whiskers not be symmetrical on either side, so I'll put some asymmetry into each of the whiskers. And each of these whiskers are on their own layer, and so you can take these and rearrange them and move them around if you like. Now I want to select all of the whisker layers here, just holding shift and selecting each of them. I'll group them together, and I'm going to call that group whiskers. Now there's lots of different styles I can choose for these whiskers. Since I've used the brush tool, I can select all of these different brushes here in the brushes palette. I can also load more brushes here as well. But I think the brush that I'm going to use is this one that looks kind of like pencil. And by default, this brush is a little bit transparent, and I don't want it to be transparent. I want it to be thick, solid black, so we'll have to change it a bit. I'm going to go to Object, and then Expand Appearance. That'll convert those brush strokes into a default layer, and then I'll select black for the fill to fill them and make them nice and dark. Now let's create the crescent-shaped pupils for the eyes. I'm going to create an egg shape with the Ellipse tool. And I'll go ahead and hold Alt and Shift and duplicate it, drag it over to the side, make the duplicate white. That creates our crescent shape, and then you can just feel free to line those up however you want. You might want to move one up or down a little bit to create a more unique crescent shape. You could even squish the white one there. The white one is the negative space. We could imagine that being cut out of the black. I'm going to select both of those layers now, go to the Pathfinder, and then do minus front, and that will punch the white out of the black, and you'll have your nice trimmed out pupil shape. We'll hold Alt and Shift and drag that over to duplicate it. And now we have our pupils. Now feel free to select those layers and group them together. Name that group Pupils. And then just like you did before, select all of those layers that you want to center, the eyes, the head, the pupils, the ears, and then just center them. Now if you want, you can move your eyes around. If they're too close together, you can select them individually and move them around. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, move them up, move them down. Whatever you need to do to get this looking good, just make sure that when you're done, you go ahead and center everything again. And make sure the head itself is centered on the body and on the neck as well. Now be careful when you're centering things using automatic centering, because one of the whiskers, I think, is a little bit longer in one of the areas. So when I try to center the whiskers, they don't actually appear centered. So I'll have to manually center those every time just by moving them myself. Now it's time to adjust the proportion a little bit. I'm going to zoom out so that I can see my cat a bit smaller. That'll help me get a better view of it overall. 
I'm going to select the body and I'm going to use the black arrow tool to maybe make the body a bit taller so there's more body to head ratio. I notice the neck is a little off on the side there, so I'll just use the curve pen tool just to grab that node and move it over to maintain the curve. I think that's looking a little bit better for the neck now. I'm going to reshape the head a little bit so it's not just a boring perfect oval. Go back to the curve pen tool, select the head layer, and I can drag these nodes on the side and on the top and on the bottom. That'll help me reshape the head so it's not perfectly symmetrical all the way around. I can also click on the line where there's not already a node and add a node if I want to flatten out the top of the head a little bit. I'll pull down the chin to make it a little pointier. And then I think I'll go ahead and manipulate the ears a little bit, make those bigger overall. I also want to scoot each of the ears in towards the center. So I'm going to select the white arrow tool, click on the ear to select just one of the ears, and then just scoot it over with the right and left arrow keys. Just keep track of how many nudges you do. And since I move things around, I just want to make sure everything's centered. So I'll double click on the head group to isolate it. And I'll select all of those head components and then just make sure that they're aligned. And the whiskers are misaligned again, so I'll just have to grab those separately and scoot them over. And that looks much better. Now the head is perfectly centered again. Now because of the size of the head, this almost looks like an old skinny cat. Maybe we want to make it a kitten. So let's go ahead and just select the head group. And we'll use the black arrow tool just to transform this and scale it up. If we hold Alt and Shift, we can scale while keeping it centered. And now with a much bigger head, it looks more like a kitten. Now I want to go ahead and change the eye color. So I'm going to select just the color part of the eyes, not the pupils. And we can try some different colors like white, or maybe a kind of a lime green like this. And if we look in our color guide, we can get different shades of each color. So maybe we'll make that a bit lighter. They look more like green glowing eyes in the night. I kind of like that. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can see this a bit closer. And I want to smooth out some of these lines, especially on the body. I'm going to select the body layer, and then I'm going to look underneath the pencil tool for the smooth tool, which looks kind of like a blending stump. And then all I need to do is just simply paint over those nodes, and that'll smooth them out and make fewer nodes. And you just want to do kind of short strokes. Imagine that you're actually smoothing it with your finger and follow the contour that you want to create as well. Stay away from the corners, you'll probably mess those up, but just do those nice smooth curved areas on the chest and the back and the tail. Now I want to add a little asymmetry to the ears, so I'll take a notch out of one of them. I'll go ahead and double click on just the ear layers just to isolate them. And then I'll select white and the ellipse tool and I'll draw a circle to take a notch out of the ear. I'll select that layer and go to convert anchor point tool and then I'll go ahead and turn one of those curves into a sharp point. Then I'll use the black arrow tool just to squish it into kind of a wedge shape and line it up with the ear. Next, I want to do a little work on the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and use the white arrow tool to select just one pupil and one eye and go ahead and use minus front to punch the pupil out of the eye shape. That way we just have a single shape for our eyes. Now let's change the expression on this cat by rotating its head a little bit. Let's just select the entire head group. And with the black arrow tool, we can simply just rotate it there on the corner. And now the cat looks a little more curious, like maybe it's listening to something or just kind of checking you out. Let's make the eyes a little more spooky. We'll go ahead and just select just the eye layer. And we'll make sure that there's no stroke on it. And then we'll go to Effect, Stylize, Outer Glow. We'll choose Screen for the mode. We'll turn on Preview so we can see what we're doing. And then we will select a greenish color that matches the color that we selected for our eyes. And you could play with the opacity and blur if you like, but I like those settings. And now our eyes look like they're glowing. And this next part is sort of optional. I'm going to add a background, but if you want to leave it without a background, like I have with my little animated example on the bottom left, then you can just leave the background blank. Now it may look like it's white, but there's actually nothing back there. If you were to export this as an image with transparency, such as a PNG, then you could take this cat and you could put it on top of any other kind of background and it wouldn't have anything surrounding it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to put that beneath my cat group. Go ahead and select a dark blue for my background and just make sure that's selected for my fill. And I want to make sure that my stroke is set to nothing. And I'll use the rectangle tool just to draw in my background here. Now as soon as I put in that background, I notice that that notch I cut out of the ear, I forgot to actually cut out. I still have that white on top of the black. So I'll go ahead and just isolate those ear layers and then use minus front to punch that white out of the black. And that looks much better. 
Now maybe this dark blue is too dark, so I'm gonna click on my fill swatch and I'm going to pick a different color. We could try orange, but I feel like that just looks a little too cliched. So maybe I do wanna go back to the blue, but maybe what I wanna do is create a gradient so that it's lighter in the center and then darker on the outer edges. That way the silhouette will really stand out. To do that with my background selected, I'll go to the gradient panel, click on the gradient, and I can change it to this orange radial preset. But if we don't want it to be orange, all we really need to do is just drag a color swatch from the color picker or from the color guide down onto that little gradient panel for each of the little nodes of the gradient, and that'll change the color to a different color scheme. Now, if you want there to be more light blue and less dark blue, you can move this little diamond up here at the top, and that'll control the distribution. You can also move the individual swatches to change up the distribution of color. I think that's looking pretty good so far. I might make that darker blue just a little bit lighter. I'll double click on the swatch to bring up the color dialog. And I wanna change the mode that we're viewing from RGB to HSB, that way I can control the brightness. And I'll just turn the brightness up a little bit using the B slider. And I think with that, we have a finished black cat drawing. Now you can of course export this by going to file, save as. First I'll save my original as an AI file. And then if I wanna save this as a copy for the web, I'll go to file export as. I'll choose PNG and I'll go to export. Then I'll wanna set the resolution to 300 if I want it to be very large and very high resolution. And then I can use that PNG to post on the web. And as I mentioned earlier, if you don't want there to be a background, just hide or remove that background layer and export as a PNG and you'll have the cat without the background. If you enjoyed this episode of Draw This, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more drawing tutorials for artists like you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.